I, I know it's a beautiful day outside, and we're inside, but can I, just, just, just for the sake of energy. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Mazi Mutafa. I'm executive director of Words, Beats, and Life. Uh, and I'd like to welcome you all to uh, If I Rule the Blogosphere. Uh, we have a, a phenomenal panel of guests here and a phenomenal set of bloggers and artists and activists in the audience. Uh, we're gonna, this is going to be a great opportunity for us to learn a little bit about what's going on in terms of policy, a little bit about what's going on in terms of this field or this community of folks, what's happening in D.C., but what, also what's happening around the country. And we're really fortunate um, in putting together this event, uh, thanks to the, the, the phenomenal work of uh, Simone Jacobson, director of the Cypher, um, that we were able to partner with the Future Music <coughs> Coalition. Um, so in terms of our contribution, we're gonna, uh, I'm going to be introducing Jeff Tate, who, who will be the, the panel moderator, who's the founding editor of Hip Hop Matters, contributing editor to the Words, Beats, and Life Global Journal of Hip Hop, DJ, music connoisseur, and, and blogger. Um, so let me go ahead and... Pass the mic. Hi, I'm Jean Cook. I'm the Executive Director of Future Music Coalition. I just wanted to say a couple words up at the top to express my appreciation to all y'all for coming out today on such a beautiful day and uh, to have what I'm sure is going to be a really, really great conversation. Just a couple of very quick things on Future Music Coalition. We got a table over there that's got some information that may be of interest to you. Talks a lot about policy, but also about music business and technology and for musicians who are looking to get their music out there online, how those new business models actually function. One other thing that I wanted to bring up before we went ahead and introduced the panelists uh, was to give you guys a heads up about a health insurance survey that Future Music Coalition is putting together. Um, we're surveying musicians from all over the country to get a sense of how they're dealing with their health insurance <coughs> options. This is one of the things that we think is one of the most pressing issues for our community, and we do want to be able to count how people are doing. Um, it's really easy to fill out the survey. It's actually online, and a bunch of us have some phones with the survey on it. You can take it while you're here. It takes about five minutes. So if you have some time today before you go, please do stop by the Future of Music table and, uh, and fill out the survey. Thank you very much. And it's my pleasure to also introduce uh, Casey Ray Hunter, who is a communications director for Future of Music Coalition. He's a musician, he's a blogger, and he also runs the Contrarian Empire. So, Thanks, Gene. Uh, thank all you guys for, again, coming in here on this beautiful day. Um, I'm Casey Ray Hunter, Communications Director for Future of Music Coalition. I kind of wanted to set up a little bit of a framework for, so you guys can think about how some of the policy issues impact what we'll be talking about today. Um, in particular, since we've got a panel of some really incredible bloggers and some forward-thinking musicians, uh, I wanted to talk about the internet. and. That's something that you know I'm sure we're going to get into on multiple levels. But right off the bat, I wanted to take a quick little straw poll. How many in the audience today are musicians or producers? Just raise your hand. Excellent. Uh, how many of you guys are bloggers or have a blog? Awesome. Uh, how many of you guys are members of the United States Congress? Well, I, cool. I won't be giving you any, any crap then. Um, so, you know, when we're, when we're talking about the internet, Future of Music Coalition uh, has, has been doing a lot of work to make sure that folks, artists in particular, have access to this really powerful communications tool. Because historically, when we look at the music business, particularly on the independent artist side and independent label side, there was a lot of difficulty in getting to the marketplace, a lot of difficulty in getting to audiences, a lot of difficulty in, you know, uh, you, growing your fan base because everything was based on a system of bottlenecks and gatekeepers. And the internet is totally different. It was designed on an open platform. It means that everybody who wants to innovate on that platform is free to do so. You can uh, you know, build your website, you know, sell music, you can uh, establish a relationship with your fans, you can start a blog, you can have a MySpace page, a Facebook page. You can do all of this really amazing stuff enter into the, all these really amazing conversations without having to ask permission. Now, since the, the internet was designed this way, you might think, well, great, it's solved. What, you know, that's awesome, what do we have to worry about? The problem is right now, uh, the folks that actually provide your internet connection, the, the internet service providers, the folks that you get the bill from every month, 
um, they would like to be able to charge a fee to content providers. Now that could be all of you musicians, it could be all of you bloggers, it's me, it's basically anybody that puts stuff up on the web. They want to charge content providers a, a, a fee for the faster delivery of their sites and services. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but when you look at something like commercial radio and what's happened over the years with the consolidation and the station ownership and what that's meant for independent artists and local artists who now really have no shot of getting on the airwaves and therefore reaching potential audiences, well, if your internet service provider was going to charge a smaller content provider, an indie label, an indie artist, a blogger, for the faster delivery of their services, you might not be able to compete against these, you know, these guys that have all the money in the world. And we think that that would be just absolutely devastating for our community, our community of you know, artists, our community of musicians, our community of writers, our community of fans. Uh, and that's what today's conversation is really going to be about at the end of the day, is community. Because when we're talking about hip hop blogs, uh, you know, these are people who are doing great work building this community, and this is your voice. And if we're talking about any other policy issue out there, healthcare, which Gene just mentioned, it could be education reform, immigration reform, any kind of political issue you want to get involved in, you need a voice. And the internet actually gives you that voice, gives you that platform. No one's going to tell you no, and we just want to protect that. So we've been involved in this net neutrality conversation for, uh, well, geez, since around 2007 when we kicked off this thing called the Rock the Net campaign. A bunch of really great artists, some superstar rock bands like R.E.M. and Pearl Jam, some great underground hip-hop acts like Boots Riley from The Coup. We got, you know, like avant-garde classical ensembles like Kronos Quartet. You know, it's a range of musicians that are demonstrating not just to you know, the world, but to policymakers that, you know, our community cares about having a voice and keeping internet platforms open. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit without getting too wonky, just to frame the conversation, because honestly, everything that we're going to be talking about in terms of, like, getting music to fans, getting fans hip to music, you know, uh, talking about music, talking about social issues, all of this depends on you having a voice, and you having a voice depends on keeping these internet platforms open. So before you know, we get into this, this awesome conversation, I just wanted to say that right now, the FCC is doing something pretty historic. They're, they're asking everybody, the public, every stakeholder, everybody who's use it, who uses the internet, to comment on their proposed rulemaking to come up with you know, some really easy to understand rules of the road for ISPs, to keep the lanes open, to make sure that the, these structures remain you know, accessible to everybody. Uh, we have a, a tool at our site, www.futureofmusic.org. Uh, it's, it's really simple. It, help, it kind of gets your, your juices flowing. You can tell the FCC how you use the internet in your lives, your careers, your blogs. Uh, it's, you know, it's really simple. It would be awesome for you to get on record. Because uh, like I said, the FCC doesn't do this every day. Um, this is kind of a, a, a big deal. Um, or as Joe Biden would say, a big effing deal. Um, so you can, you, know, you can go to our site, check that out. We encourage you to use that tool. The deadline is April 8th, so the clock is ticking there. Um, so we encourage you to tell the FCC how you feel about the internet and you know, if you believe that it needs to stay open for all the reasons that I just talked about. And with that, I'd just like to have all the, the, the panelists come up and uh, give this back over to our moderator. So thanks for having us, and we'll talk more. A big round of applause for the Future of Music Conference for helping us put this together. How you guys doing out there? We've got a good host of bloggers here, uh, real big personalities on the internet and in real life. Uh, traveled for miles around to come out and be ideal with you guys tonight. Uh, we'll start with my left here. We have Mecca from our uh, two dope boys. Uh, DC native, uh, very humble and modest MC and producer, Odyssey. Dallas Penn, uh, from the Dallas Penn and one half of uh, 
the internet celebrities. Uh, uh, we have Frank Williams Miller Jr., FWMJ, uh, from Rappers I Know. And Jason Reynolds, poet and a longtime contributor uh, for OK Player. It's good having you guys up here with us tonight. Uh, you guys, give us a, a hint about what you guys blog about um, and who you are. Use the mics. Thank you. I, I'm going to lead it off. Only because I grabbed the mic first. I grabbed the mic first. I grabbed it first. Rock, paper, scissors. Um, I'm Dallas Penn. I'm, I'm actually one third of, of a filmmaking collective called Internet Celebrities. Me and uh, one of uh, uh, my, my, my other buddy were on. We're on uh, okay, look at, look at that. Me and my buddy Rafi are on camera while our other friend Kaz holds the camera. Uh, I like that Jeff said the word Internet. I would love for more people to say the word Internet. George Bush got thrown under the bus when he said that. But I, I like to tell people that the internets are interconnected networks. Uh, that's your Facebook, your MySpace, your Twitter account. I imagine that the people that go to your MySpace aren't the same people that go to your Facebook. <coughs> and the people that go to your Facebook may not be the same people that you talk to on Twitter. But all of these networks have a, have a common denominator, and that's you, the user. And I use Twitter to talk to people in a different manner than I use to talk to people on Facebook. I, my mom's on Facebook, for crying out loud. <laughs> and MySpace is, is still a great portal uh, for musicians, for people to hear your music, for people to get a taste uh, of, of the content, of the, uh, the art that you're creating. So I, I would love for you folks to, to be willing to say the word internet, because they, there are many interconnected networks. Even Black Planet, whoever, who's still on Black Planet out there? Okay, all right, all right. Oh, no, no OGs from Black Planet, that's all right. That's all right, I'm still on Black Planet. I'm still on Black Planet, but um, <laughs> internet, folks, internet. How y'all doing? Um, I'm Odyssey, I'm Ian Muhammad, I'm a local MC producer from, from right around here. Um, I guess I'm up here, I don't actually run a blog, I run my own blog as an artist blog, but I guess I'm up here because uh, a large part of my success in general is because these guys post my content. And um, yeah, I guess I, I'm here to answer a few questions on what you can do to create the type of content that they can post and I guess they can follow up on that as well. Hello? Uh, <laughs> I'm Mecca, two dope boys, one half of them. Uh, we started the site in October of 07, and since then it's become one of the, I guess you can say one of the top spots for hip hop music and content and whatever on the web. So, I mean, we solely don't just do hip hop or music videos. We do everything from video games to women to even politics. So. I don't know why a lot of people want to hear me speak. Um, I'm very opinionated and I'm a bit of a cynic when it comes to the whole music thing because I've been doing it via journalism for about six, seven years and I've seen the highs and the lows. So I guess don't be mad if I tell you something you don't want to like. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> hello, hello. Hi, I'm, I'm Frank. Uh, I go by FWMJ on the internet. Or as we say in Houston, the internet. Um, I run rappersiknow.com and um, it's a website and sort of like a design house that I, um, I started with a few friends of mine back in Houston. Um, being that, you know, we're from down there and the type of music we make or made, you know, may have sounded different than what people expect from the area. Um, nobody really, you know, wanted to listen or, or give our music a chance, so we decided to put it out for ourselves for free on the internet, and uh, people gravitated towards it. So, you know, not too long after we started the website, people from other regions, uh, you know, started sending us music and wanted to be a part, and 
So we've been doing it for like the last five years and we're just trying to, you know, highlight underexposed hip hop that we still like personally, you know, so it's a little, I guess it could be a little exclusive in that sense, but you know, it's all in, in good spirit with good intentions. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Jason Reynolds, and uh, um, by trade, I'm a, I'm a writer, of, uh, a poet, um, but for the past, I guess, four or five years, I've <coughs> been a writer for OK, which is one of, also, one of the, uh, the premier um, hip-hop community sites. Um, started by Amir Questlove Thompson uh, from The Roots, and um, it's just one of those sites that, like, we, we tend to uh, do a little bit of everything. It's a huge message board that covers, you know, a wide range of topics. I mean, you can find anything from, you know, know hip-hop questions and hip-hop conversations to political conversations to really random, silly things like what's going on this weekend conversation, you know. Um, my job for OK Player is uh, I've been a music reviewer for them for a very long time. And I am one of the few who does a lot uh, on my own assignment. So like usually the way OK Player works is Jenny from OK Player assigns, you know, she assigns you a, a project, you write the review. Um, I typically do most of that myself, just you know, on my own musical research. So the cats that I meet on the streets, so the people that I meet in the clubs or wherever, I tend to take those folks, listen to their records, and, uh, and, and give them a shot and give them some shine. Um, which I think is necessary, uh, as well as taking the assignments. Um, so that's, that's my place in, on this particular panel. You guys already heard me blab a lot, but um, I just wanted to tell you uh, real quick a little bit more about Future Music Coalition. Um, I'm also a, a music journalist, or I used to be before I became communications director of FMC. I'm a blogger too, so I, I probably, you know, I'm gonna feel most of what you're saying, I think. Um, uh, Future Music Coalition, we deal a lot with like the policy issues that impact artists, and there's a lot of decisions that get made right here in Washington that are going to affect the entire space. Two things that we work on primarily are access, which you heard me talk a little bit about uh, before. That's access to media, that's access to the internet. Having access to the internet is a very important thing. Uh, also, you know, traditional mediums like radio, uh, community radio, local radio true stuff that's happening in people's backyards so they can understand the art that's being made there. And the other stuff that we keep an eye on is compensation because, again, like I said, the earlier version of the industry didn't always have the artist's uh, best interests uh, at heart. So whatever structures that we build, all of us, you know, we want to make sure that we're still keeping sight on uh, of how artists are going to make a living uh, now and in the future. So with that, I'll give it back. All right, uh, with Odyssey, uh, you talked, uh, you, I wanted to get back to you talking about uh, speaking to um, the success that you've had um, via promoting your music on the internet and the fact that well, most times a lot of your projects have started off, you know, either the instrumental comes out, instrumentals come out for free, or there's some sort of free package that comes out first. Um, do you then base the reaction to that on whether or not you then put finance behind the project and sell it, or is it always, is that the end goal? Um, no, the, the, the end goal for me is always to sell a product. Not necessarily the product I'm giving away for free, but a product. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to come into the industry at a time where I saw the, the rise and fall of an old formula and give birth to this kind of middle ground that we're in right now where no one really knows what the new formula is as far as on a major, major scale. Um, when I started off, some of the first work I did was at a touch of jazz in Philadelphia. And um, that's when uh, Jeff pretty much had the largest, Jazzy Jeff pretty much had like the largest studio on the East Coast. He had studio rooms A through J. The reason why I'm explaining you this story is because the internet played a major role in consolidating everything that I witnessed into just a few things to make a living from. I saw that studio go from A through J to Studio A and just get shut down and reduced. Um, I saw tons and tons of studios across the country closed down and people just have bedroom studios. Major studios that people record out of just get shut down. I saw labels fall apart. I saw groups um, get ripped apart through the internet from bootlegging and not really come up with a new way to make a living. I saw them lose their record, they, their record labels. And 
I kind of just had that opportunity to witness all of that, to come up with my own formula, my own scheme to, to do things. So there's been a lot of issues and a lot of concerns on both sides of the fence as far as releasing free music first and for sale. Um, the combination for me, as what Jeff was, was asking about, I release things first, good things. I don't oversaturate. I, I tend to do my best to release quality, good music, to make a person feel morally obligated to want to purchase something to be a part of what it is that I'm doing. So if I give you something so good for free, why not support something that I have to sell? And I can't say that that works for every artist, but for some reason, and I'm still figuring it out now, again, the formula hasn't really been completely constructed, but it works for me. Um, I see sales increases immediately with all the free content I release. Um, yeah, so whenever I release something free, for sure, I'm already planning on selling something right after. And uh, with, with you producing um, and not really being in the, uh, the blogging game to break like a music portal, uh, like Rappers I Know or Two Dope Boys or OK Player, uh, I want to know, do you guys, like Jason said you took initiative uh, when looking for music to review, uh, do you guys have a, a best practice, uh, either Frank or Emeka, for where you find music or is it most of it submitted to you? Um, well, for me, um, Rappers I Know isn't really like subscription based. I mean, because it's in the blog format, a lot of people assume that it's like a music news site and it's really not. It's, it's way more, you know, communal, you know, like I know all these people personally, I wouldn't have a problem with them crashing on my couch if I go out of town, you know, it's that sort of thing. So, I mean, uh, when the site first started, um, it's because I met a guy uh, out of Tampa, Florida, and he goes by Slot Farm Dust, and he knows like everybody in the underground. In fact, it's by him that I found out about Odyssey, and you know, a lot of cats here in the DMV. Um, you know, so like, you know, he sent me beat tapes that he had from them and I listened to them and, you know, I passed them to the artists in my area, you know, where I was at when I was in school in Houston and they liked their music and they want to reach out and work with these people and, you know, it's through these little networks, you know, on that front is that I, I'm able to find, you know, new music and people that I like. There's always going to be somebody that comes out of left field that I had no clue about. For example, you know, Danny Brown sitting over there on the side, like, he's from Detroit. I feel like I know everybody, you know, in Detroit and then I had no idea who he was until this last year, and now I can't listen to anything else but, you know, what he's doing. Um, so there's always, there's always people that'll, you know, that'll hit you out of left field. But I, I personally, I don't, I don't really do the submission thing because there's so many submissions. There's not enough time in the day, and I still gotta, you know, do my laundry and feed my cat and, you know, sleep every now and then. If you listen to music 24-7, you can't do it. So I guess uh, at some point, you know, you need to have, like, a staff that'll be able to, you know, trust your ears, whether it's your friends or, you know, whatever that'll listen to stuff for you and put you on. So, I mean, for me, it, it, it's it's I don't know. I, I guess it's just one of those things that like I'm, I'm pretty entrenched in like in music and in hip hop and every other kind of music. It's just it's inevitable, right? It's not it's not something that's it's not hard to find new cats. I think people got it twisted where they're like, yo, you know, there's nothing new. And reality is, is that like there's an abundance of newness, right? It's just a matter of whether or not you have your eyes and ears open. Right, and actually willing to kind of like give it a shot. Right, like recently I reviewed an album from a band called uh, a group called Ineffables in uh, in New York, where well, they New York Philly Philly based group. And it really the the, the first listen, the, it was whack. Like I thought, you know what I mean? Like it was whack. It was because it was really like really avant garde, you know, left of center, nothing that that I was used to. But it was you know, but it was different in a way that like I wanted to give it a second listen. And so upon like second listen or third listen, then you're like, oh, this is kind of like, you know, if like Doom and like Wu-Tang had like made with Goody Mob like 10 years ago, like this would have been some shit that they would have made. You know what I mean? And so um, I, think, I think for me, it, it tip, and, I, and I met the dude because he serves me coffee every single day, right? Like the guy who, who part of the group is like my barista, not my personal one, but I, like, every day he's there giving me coffee. And, uh, and we got to talking and that's how it happened. So I think it's just a matter of like, we're gonna take a shot sometimes and give it a listen. I mean, if it's, if it's bad, it's bad, but some, it's a, there are a lot of things that are worth giving it a listen to. That, uh, you know, Hodge and Dumb High, I don't know if you guys know that. You know, like, I reviewed, I reviewed their stuff, and it's like, they did a whole album about, like, yoga, like, like influenced by, like, yoga and meditation, a hip-hop album, and it was brilliant. But a lot of people would have passed it by just because, like, the cover is this cat in, like, meditative stance, and, you know, it's, but it's amazing. You know, so just, just take a risk. 
Um, where do I start? Yeah, when we, when we started the site, uh, myself and Shake, we were basically just two regular dudes who loved music. We had both met on the website, Hip Hop DX Life. Um, I was a freelance journalist there, and I had started doing a blog there around April of 07 called Slap Boxing with Jesus. It turned out to be one of the more, more popular uh, segments on that site because for the most part, my opinions were, I'll just say, incendiary. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, when I, I had actually had the opportunity to meet up with Shake at like Rock the Bells in 07 that year, and the people at DX were amazed at how well we got along. So they wanted to start the site for us, but something happened. They never started the site, and I went up to Shake one day. I was like, "Yo, are they ever gonna do this site?" And he's like, "We can start it ourselves." And there you go. Basically, when we first started the site, though, we usually just we just used it to post whatever music we were feeling. And me, I wasn't feeling a lot of like new anything. So I used to always just post nothing but old soul samples back in the day. And then as I got more involved into the site, I started looking at better artists such as like Pac Div, such as like you and I, such as like Tehran and El Prez, primarily from the West and just all over. And what I try to do now is always try to shine. We both always try to shine a light on those that need a light shined on them. Like an artist like Rick Ross or an artist like Gucci Mane or one of those I call A-list talents, they're not gonna need our promotion or whatnot because they already have a set fan base. But say an artist like Odyssey or his group, The Diamond District or whatever, we feel that it's, we feel that we should shine a special light on them because not only are they bringing dope music, we feel that the rest of the world should listen to this dope music. So that's my mind state when it comes to trying to promote music on the site. Now granted, I have to do the typical Gucci, the Waynes, and all that other stuff. Except Gucci, I never post any Gucci, man. I don't like him for whatever reason, but because um, we understand that's like part of the business that, that keeps the people coming. But honestly, I'll tell everybody that this, if I can just promote indie and up and coming artists all day, I would. But apparently, obviously I can't because nobody would want to come to the site if it was full of like, I don't know, I'm just throwing a random, any, and, yeah, and just that talent. So it's kind of tricky trying to, um, get a new act onto the site because nowadays my inbox is flooded so much that I'm constantly having to like empty it out just to keep it from going over the 100% limit. Um, so it's, it's really hard to like go through each and every email which sometimes totals in the hundreds to 200s per hour to try to find like one good song out of a relative unknown. Like, I'll tell you this, like, to me, it's, 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 it's. With that, uh, what, what can an artist do, any, any aspiring artist who's working through the internet to get their promotion um, or to get uh, some notoriety? What is a good way then, with that being the case of, like we've talked about, an abundance of music, an oversaturation of music, what raises their profile? What avenues would they be able to best get music to you? Um, well, the first thing I was going to say is stop rapping. Because there's, this, it's not, that's, not a, that's not a shot at anybody, but there's too many rappers and not enough like teachers. Like everybody wants to be a rapper, nobody wants to be a doctor. So that's, but if you choose to go to rap, um, <laughs> if you choose to go to rap, I guess just, I don't know. Like sometimes I'll get bored and just thumb through an email and it turns out that, oh, this is actually pretty dope and I'll support it. But like more often than not, I'm always looking at like, coming from a journalist background, I'm always looking at just how the emails presented. Is it presented professionally? Is there an attachment? Is there a link? Like if you send me an email and it's full of grammatical errors and a MySpace page, I'm not gonna check that instantly. 
you know, but if you present grammar counts, like, folks, grammar counts. <laughs> but if you present your music in a professional way, then I'm gonna look at it and treat it in a professional manner. If I don't like it, I'll do whatever. But if I do like it, I'll throw it up. So, as a former English teacher, uh, I love that he just said that grammar matters to him and what he's looking for. I was also gonna say, uh, uh, perspective of artist. You, you've got to become much more than an artist now. You, you've got to become a little bit of an editor. Um, you've got to become definitely a critic. I, I wish artists would send uh, me their <coughs> best track. Send me your two best songs, not your mixtape. Um, although I'm sure it's got all good work on it. But if, if artists could curate their work a little better, edit their work a little better, so that I could hear the best that they're presenting, and, and not have to go through, you know, some, some artists I just feel like they have to give you 20 songs because that's what they would put on an album. Let's understand that, that sometimes 10 of those songs are, you know, they're not your best. You know, maybe 15 of them aren't your best, aren't your best uh, pre presentation of yourself. So if artists could, could curate themselves a little tighter, edit themselves a little tighter, I think that helps, um, I guess that's, that's my first thing. That's my first thing for you guys. To, um, to understand that, that your artistry now determines that you become uh, several other persons. You, you become your own A&R. You become uh, the other hats that were, that were part of this music industry that are no longer present. You're gonna wear those hats now. So you, you can't just think of yourself as I'm just the rapper or I'm simply the producer. You've gotta, you've gotta be much more uh, uh, part of your your machine than that. I was going to say for me, um, I need you know the musicians and the MCs and the singers and the producers that like approach me to not necessarily approach me the first step with their music or their CD in hand. I gotta like you as a person. The site is very little rappers I know. Sometimes producers, sometimes singers, sometimes other facets of art and entertainment. But like, I gotta feel like I know you first before I, I want to be invested in posting your music. Like I said, it's not necessarily a news, like a music <coughs> news site for me. It's like these are projects that I, you know, I personally feel like everybody needs to hear. Whereas, you know, you know, there, you know, other other sites will, will post a lot of stuff because, you know, you want the traffic. So when you do highlight something new and underground, you know, you might get an audience that you know you don't necessarily you wouldn't necessarily get for them. Um, so in that sense, maybe I'm preaching to the choir a little bit, like people know what to expect when they come to my site. But I, I just, um, I, I feel like I have to know you, I have, to, I have to, you know, like you as an individual and feel that, you know, that your music is telling your specific narrative. Like the only reason I do this is because, um, you know, everybody's individual story is what makes us important. You know, if any of us die tomorrow, if nobody cares about our specific story, the things we've gone through, the things we're going through, things we're doing and accomplishing, you know, you've forgotten, like tears in the rain, right? So if you can make yourself, you know, stand out from just somebody that can rap good over beats that are good, you know, people will gravitate towards it. And I will gravitate towards it. So yeah, don't, um, you know, don't approach me, give me that, tell me your name, and then hand me three mixtapes. You know, like Dell said, you, like he said, you gotta edit yourself down. If, if, if you are on that, on that note, you know, see your two best tracks, you know. It's not like when I was in college and I did, had every all the time in the world. I just didn't want to go to class. I wasn't doing no problem sets. I wasn't studying for an exam. I was just listening to rap music all day. You know, bills are in effect. You know, you got <laughs> like you said, you got to fold that laundry. So you know, you got to you got to make it worth my while. Um, something on on what, what Mecca and Frank said, kind of combining the two issues: with too many rappers and not approaching him with your CD in your hand. Um, a solution I found for that is still understanding the importance of tastemakers. I, I find a lot of artists think with their own egos that if their music is good, that magically when they send him an email, he's going to open it. And it doesn't work that way. If you can connect yourself with tastemakers, people who are on their radars, people they do respect, people they have actual real dialogue with and face-to-face, and, and your chances, or if your music is good, your chances of, of getting on these people's radar increases. Um, for me, personally, I didn't really even know what a blog was until about two years ago. Um, Peter Rosenberg is a close friend of mine. I've known him over 10 years. He's a radio personality on High 97. Um, 
And he's very, very familiar with lots of blogs and was in that world and told me I have to increase my blog presence. I was like, blog presence, what's that? He's like, you don't know what you're doing? And I was like, no, nah, put me on game. So the reason I'm telling you this story is, is um, because my music was good, Peter wanted to look out for me. And because Peter looked out for me, I became on a radar of something I didn't know in the first place. And you'd be surprised how many tastemakers you do actually know. Instead of trying to contact, contact them directly, there's someone locally right around in your neighborhood that you know on Twitter that you're a friend with that is one of those influential tastemakers. You connect with that person. You may not be able to talk to Frank face to face. Frank lives in New York. You live here or you live somewhere else. But someone you know talks to Frank. You know what I mean? Frank is a, an important person on the internet and in his world. Frank, I'm very, I, I watch everything. I'm from here and more people knew Frank in here today than they did me when I came to get greeted and just walking around. More people was like, Frank, what's up Frank? Frank know more people than I do in my own city. You know what I'm saying? So find out those people who Frank know. Play them your music and then they'll call Frank and be like, yo Frank, it's this dude who's, who's really, really dope. And that works in every aspect of life. I'm from DC. Frank was looking for a roommate in New York. Who found him a roommate in New York? I did. That's how it works. Talk to people. You know what I'm saying? Like, talk to people right around here. Stop trying to go after people directly simply because you think the music is good. It doesn't cut it. It's oversaturated. You know what I mean? Within the book, within like the, the blog, where if, you have like a, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're pitching your music to like a mega blog, right? Like one of these blogs that, that does have, like, OK Player. OK Player has a staff, right? They have you know, an editor, they have like, three interns, and they have 15 writers, something like that, um, who, who basically manage this whole, this whole movement. And if you have a site like that where you have like, a, a, a body of people, you know, in the same vein that Odyssey was saying, like, don't, don't, don't contact the editor, right? Like, we're in the world of the internet, right? So if you look at the site, see who's writing the kind of review that the, in the style that you like, and find that person, right? Find the writer. Google the writer. You know, it, I mean, it, it, Google is amazing. We all know that, right? It's like type a name in, see what happens. I get emails all the time from from MCs and musicians who are like, "Yo, I read a review you did, or I, I read Hodge and Dumb High review or something like that, and, and I want you to listen to my stuff. Could you give it a shot?" The reality is that I'm not I'm not as busy as Jenny. I'm not as busy as as Frank. You know, I I write you know five six reviews a month. You know, I get ten emails a day from other people about other things. And two from about OK Player, so I can listen to it, I can give it a shot, um, you know. And so that's that's just a different avenue. Like I think people go straight to the top, and I think sometimes you got to start with the legs. Like like talk to the cats who can like pull strings, because Jenny doesn't like I can I I write the reviews that I want to write, and I pitch them to Jenny, and Jenny passes it, and it goes on the site, whether she knows that person or not, whether she's heard of it or not. Like she trusts her staff, so like that's just a different way to look at it as far as um you know, how to get this stuff out there. Now, granted, the same note, like, know that if you send it to me, it's my job to be, to be honest and to give my opinion. So I think people feel like, yo, if I do you a solid, then I'm gonna give you a good review. And it's like, nah, I mean, if it's, if it's not good, I'm gonna write you a poor review. And that's just the risk we took, you know what I mean? Because my, my credibility is on the line like everybody else's. But that's the way to do it, that's the way to go about it. He actually makes a very good point because since there are two people that run our site, um, more often than not, I end up getting, both of us end up liking artists that the other one promotes. Like we're, like our site works kind of differently. Like we basically post it, what we want. There's no, if I post it, he doesn't like it, I take it down. Or if Shake posts it, I don't like it, he takes it down. So Shake, Shake has put me on to like a lot of artists, including Odyssey and by extension Diamond District. But for the most part, um, I hear of artists from other people. Like there, there, there will be times where, uh, actually a perfect example, um, back in 07, like August 07, I stumbled upon a group, called, a group the UNI. They were performing at uh, Sneaker Pimps or whatnot. And I thought the music was okay, but when I tried to get one of their mixtapes, they snubbed me. So I was like, oh, well, y'all then. Or not. So a couple months later, uh, one of my homeboys based out in LA was like, yo, you gotta listen to this crew called the UNI. And I was like, them same dudes? I was like, okay, let me see. And they he showed me the video and I was like, this music is actually great. So um 
Yeah, like, we'll find them. Don't, like, the thing is, like, basically what I'm saying, don't find us, we'll find you. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny, I just, we hear this conversation a lot, I hear it a lot. I've been on <coughs> both sides of the fence uh, to a degree as a, you know, as a journalist and as, a, as an artist. What we're talking about is where did the, you know, the filter go? Back in the old days, you knew what the filter was. The filter was the magazine you went to the store to buy. There was some guy, you probably had no way to interact with him in your life if you were an artist, and he decided or she decided what was good. And now, like, you know, the bloggers, they gain credibility, and credibility is the key word, they gain credibility by being authentic in their way, and the artist gains credibility by being authentic in their way. So the, the thing is, everybody has to meet a minimum acceptable, authentic, you know, level of authenticity. And the other thing is doing the research is huge too, because you know, sitting there like when I used to be a music editor, sitting there like this was like, you know, when CDs would pile up, I'd have CDs like this and then like a little bit later I'd have like an inbox full of millions of MP3s and like I just can't get through all that. So to cut through the clutter, it was like really helpful if somebody knew who I was. It took five minutes. And I don't have a big ego about it like, oh, you know, like I'm the gatekeeper, everyone should know who I am. But it's really, really helpful, it cuts through the clutter, and the artists could do a lot better job, not just in curating like their best stuff, but figuring out like who their target is, you know, their target writer, their target fan, or whatever, so, and, and be authentic. And to speak to the filtering and curation point, uh, with Danny out in the crowd, uh, I was up in Philly with my man Rich, and uh, House Shoes, and uh, my man Arthur would come by, and this was about, about the third, fourth time I'd heard about Danny, and after meeting House Shoes and being a thorough dude, I was like, you know, let me check for him. Like, I had, things have to be recommended a certain amount of times. Like, I can see it on OK Player. OK, I saw that once. All right, I see this twice. All right, all, right. all three of these credible people have given it uh, their OK, so let me check for it now. Uh, Dallas, I wanted to give you a chance to talk about uh, how you broke in. Um, you know, for anyone who isn't in any of these other positions, how you broke into your spot. Uh, I feel like you're a <coughs> pure journalist. Uh. Uh, I started uh, I, I started as a writer. Um, I used to actually send emails um, to uh, people that I knew that were at MTV, BET, and um, this was even before I started the blog. I called my, my email, um, my email blast, I called them weblogs, because they, they were just daily musings and writings that uh, I would send out and I finally decided to create an actual weblog site. And just through writing, um, I created a, a, a post that talked about me going to McDonald's and creating a Big Mac sandwich for a dollar. Uh, the dollar menu for McDonald's had a, a double cheeseburger for a dollar at the time. And I go to McDonald's and I have them put all kinds of extra stuff on the sandwich. And uh, Raffi, who I'm uh, partnered with on Internet Celebrities, saw that, he said, man, that'd make a great viral video. People would love to watch that. And I thought, no way. You know, no one's gonna like that. So he says, don't worry, let's make the video. I know a guy who, who does good with viral videos. So we go to McDonald's and we shoot this video. And, you know, we're there for about an hour. Uh, the video ends up being four minutes long, and it does go viral. And I said, wow, wait a minute. I, I'm killing myself here writing, you know, blog posts, <laughs> And you know, a four minute video, and in one week, like you know, 100,000 views. Um, some time on MySpace, 500,000 views. Uh, then the YouTube uh, page blew up again. So um, I, it was, what I realized was that we are a post-literate society. Not that people can't read, everyone can read. Who wants to read? Why read? <laughs> Why read when you can get your information off of the tubes? BookTube, YouTube, so um, <laughs> that's when we decided to really to to go hard giving information on uh, by by a video, and and people take it. And I mean, honestly, it's it's no less than when I was when I was writing, but the response is that much more tremendous. And um, it's it's a DIY, do it yourself. That uh, you know. Early, early hip hop had this, punk music had this, but um, I mean, we we are so lucky that we have all of these tools at our availability right now. Um, you know, cheap video cameras, you know, free uh, internet access most of the time. Well, not free, but you know, it's paid for. It's not it's not too regulated yet. 
I mean, we can totally distribute ourselves and, and get our message, get whatever, you know, kooky, zany idea, whether it's music or uh, whether it's just information to, to the world. All right. Uh, also, on, on Dallas Penn, you talk about, uh, about you're fairly honest in your, your whatever your daily um, ramblings are, whatever's going on in your life, and uh, you often talk about money. Um, I also read Frank, uh, you know, you, you want to do rappers I know full time. Odyssey's a full time musician, you work for OK Claire. Um, what helps make or what things, skills um, help you guys try to make what you do profitable? First of all, right now on the internet, um, hardly anything. There, there, are some, there are some vehicles that are making money. Uh, but we're finding that uh, accepting this new model it's still, it's still coming hard. It's still, you're still pushing the square peg through the round hole. I think that eventually we're gonna, you know, we're gonna whittle that peg down and it's gonna fit. Uh, but we're still trying to, to find a way for, for people with money, the people that still wanna give money to television, which is, to me, throwing it away, uh, we're still trying to find a way to get them to give us money. Um, but some people have, the, have unlocked the, the vault. I, I only know, I mean, one cat who is really making a decent, a decent living. Uh, me personally, I, I only know one cat. His name is John Randolph. Uh, he has a website. It's called Neil. It used to be illdoctrine.com. Some of you might know him. You know, I think, yeah. Uh, yo, he's a beast. Like, son is an incredible mind brain. He's a he's a hip hop. I don't know. Which, I guess some people would say he's a hip hop scholar. Some would say he's just a cat who has an opinion and, and, and is very articulate as far as his way of presenting it, and he does video blogs. You know does he I mean? make that money from the site? He makes, he made, well, without giving away too much information to how he made the money, basically he got contracted to do up on his own and double XL, and so they used to end advertising. So, you know, this cat is getting, you know, one, one post and he gets like 75 comments, you know what I mean? And if everybody who has a blog knows that like, you could, you could blog all day, but cats will read and then get, get off your blog and won't comment. This cat gets like 75 comments per post, if not more, you know? And he's got like on his side, he's got tons of blurbs from all these people who check out his stuff. But anyways, he's making money from like, like he's got a contract, he's contracted with a magazine because now every magazine is going to have to go digital. Right, every, every magazine, every form of literature that we have is going to have to digitize because literature as we know it is shifting, right? And so he caught it ahead of the curve and he said, look, Double XL, you're gonna have to, you know, adhere to this this style. I'll be the dude you go to. Right? I'm I'm you know, I'm I'm front running, I'll be the dude you go to. You, you know, they cut some kind of deal, and he's making a decent living. Is he rich? Of course not, but his his rent is paid. That's me. And when Jay says uh, John Randolph, he's talking about Jay Smooth. Jay Smooth. Jay Smooth. 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 Prior to last week, I was the head of new media at a digital marketing agency. So while the site at the moment, while it pays, that's not the only thing keeping basically me out of my mom's basement. So yeah. Um, well, for me, the three of like the last four years, I was the uh, art director of Hot 97 in New York and uh, one of my old coworkers made it all the way down from New York as well. Hey, Gigi. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, part, of, part of my duties there, um, aside from you know, doing concert stage banners and subway advertisements, a large part of it was uh, overseeing the website, which was you know, a, a revenue stream for the station and the parent company. Um, you know, so we had to start, you know, this is the first time. I've been on the internet since 92, 93. You know, Prodigy, CompuServe, you know, using coral photo paint, drawing things one pixel at a time, way back when, right? So I've never seen the internet as anything but that, you know, that free for all socialist information superhighway. So, you know, like my first day job 
was at the biggest radio station in hip hop history, and you know I'm folk, I'm being faced with you know making sure our, our site hits are up, people are coming and staying for more than two minutes, so that they can see this Pepsi ad on the side, and you know we can charge a client X amount of dollars for you know time spent and, and visitors. Um, that really hasn't bled into my personal work yet, uh, rappers I know. I'm very much an artist in that sense where I'm trying to keep it real and keep it authentic. And, um, you know, so for the most part, this is, this is, rappers I know comes out of pocket for me, unless somebody decides to donate. You can hit that donate button anytime you want. I won't do that. Um, but, you know, like after a while, you know, if you, if you, you, you know, it becomes a communal thing where you have other artists and other writers that feel invested in what you're doing. And you know, or, or they appreciate all the love you show them on the website, you know, for the last, you know, three to five years or whatever, and every now and they chip in. Um, but, you know, my, I keep myself afloat by, I started off as a, as, a, as, a, as a graphic designer, like a fine artist first and a graphic designer. So I do, you know, album covers and posters and occasionally websites for other people. So, you know, the spoils of that work is what I use to, you know, fund this labor of love. So like, not until recently, had I ever really like looked at the side of something like maybe I want to do this full time, you know, always had a day job, you know, always had something to be at nine in the morning and you know leave at ten at night. But now that's not the case. I mean, I have my own schedule and it's like you know should I try to make this work? You know, do you want to be yet yet another black man with a record label? You know, who doesn't have one of those these days? Um, <laughs> you know, and actually doing something with it. But yeah, it's 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 definitely you know still a labor of love. Um, you know, I understand you know ways to make. To make money with it, but I'm trying to find a way that I like that I could also make money with it. And that's that's a little difficult, or, or I haven't figured that out yet. Um, wow. Well, uh, basically, I, I centralized everything. Um, without the internet, I'm not even sure how successful what I do would, would be. But it, it, it changed everything for me fundamentally. Um, like all of these gentlemen here, I wear many hats. Um, I produce, I MC, I tour constantly, I tour book for other artists, I do consulting work for other labels, I engineer um, remixes, licensing the video games, uh, reality TV shows, anything you can think of that uses music, I'm involved in. And from doing all of those things, all of them, you, if one of them was gone, from doing all of those things, I can make a living. Um, the internet was so valuable to me, being able to do that. Um, just centralizing my fan base in one place and making sure that everything that I do do is an investment into everything else. So if I make a beat for someone, sure they buy that track from me, but once that track comes out, several more MCs are gonna hear it and wanna buy another track from me. And if I do a collab and I rhyme on somebody's album, X amount of other producers are gonna wanna hit me up. If I do one show, I make sure I post the content from that live performance on my blog so other agencies and promoters see that show and want to book me. Um, so everything I do is circulatory. And just consolidating everything, everything that it is that you do and wearing as many hats as possible. Like so many of you say, you, you can't just rap. You can't just make beats. You can't just do one thing anymore. You, it's, it's impossible. And uh, we all talked about um, music and uh, putting your music out, uh, posting other people's music, being sent music, um, and that brings us to a question about copyright and how that works uh, in the gray space that is the internet. Um, we had the uh, blog spot raids where they were shutting people's blogs down um, for having music posted. Um, I wouldn't know if you guys have ever dealt with anything along those lines. Um, I've, I've dealt with it, you know, before, you know, I started Rappers I Know and I just had, you know, my own server and, you know, personal web journals before they were called blogs, um, you know, where you get contacted by your, your, your host, your host provider, you know, they would run searches on your directories to see what, you know, the meta tags and the MP3s and, you know, back then, you know, if you didn't have, you know, the rights to, to have the music up there, they would either delete your stuff, shut down your account, you know, um, you know, suspend your account, whatever. Um, I don't really have so much problem with that on my blog now because I don't really post anything that's, you know, like, you know, owned by Universal or, you know, any of the major labels. It's mostly independent music that people would make themselves. Now, if somebody samples, you know, yeah, maybe that music's owned, but nobody's really <coughs> digging through my site like that yet. Um, 
I have had instances where you know I posted a song by you know people I know that you know maybe I hadn't talked to in a while and they got touchy about me because of the song, but um, you know not so much where it's like you know legal ramifications, just like you know personal disagreements about stuff getting put up. Um, this is another crazy conversation too because. You know, there's a huge double standard in the music industry, particularly on the major label side. You know, you have like the mixtape phenomenon, well, where if it's a, like a physical disc, they'll look the other way. It's part of the it's part of the promotion machine. Rose up from the underground. You know, the major labels where they still exist and they're signing artists. They saw that as something that they could do to sell hip hop and urban artists. But the minute you do that digitally, it's totally illegal. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then like there's other situations where you get you know, with, again, particularly with the big companies, they'll They'll blitz you with MP3s. They'll get them all the time, but you know, and you put it up, and you think you're safe, but you might not be because this other part, other division of that big company, hasn't you know, one hand's not you know talking to the other. Uh, you know, the way that copyright works for the artist is like, you know, it's it's really great if the artist retains the choice to exploit that work, their creative work, the way that they want to. And you know, God, we could spend you know another five hours talking about the best ways to do that, and and. At uh, FMC, we talk about this stuff all the time with like, you know, super geniuses on the legal side, super geniuses on the technology side, super geniuses on the artist side, and you know, 10 years in, no one's found the answer. Um, but the the amazing thing about it is like, a lot of artists, their problem isn't necessarily going to be about like protecting their copyright. At first, it's going to be more about like, you know, getting out of obscurity. So to some degree, if you're going to, if you have these relationships with these independent artists and you're, it's a symbiotic relationship, you know, that's probably where, you know, you guys all are, that's where I've been, you know, and, and you know, Odyssey, I think, has it totally right on too because, you know, you're talking about making money off, off this, you know, full circle and, uh, you know, it's trickier for bloggers though because what are you going to do? Like, you can only sell so many t-shirts or, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if I... Maybe, a, do you have any t-shirts? Maybe I'll buy one. No, no t-shirts. <laughs> but you know, like the artists, the artists in some ways have it easier because there's more stuff that they can monetize, uh, you know, outside of just that MP3, which, you know, increasingly some people are seeing as a promotional thing. I personally would love it if, you know, people could get paid off recorded music. You know, I, I've been a producer and engineer and an artist too, and, and I still try to sell that stuff. <coughs> so, you know, it's great if somebody actually wants to buy it, but nine times out of ten I'm trying to figure out other stuff that I can sell. Like the next record I'm going to put out is going to be a graphic novel. It's going to have a CD in it, you know what I mean? But I'm going to like write a friggin' graphic novel in order to sell something that, you know, it's like, why? <laughs> why did I even get into this? But anyway, it's a fascinating conversation. Oh, okay. Um, no, next buddy. Come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess before before I continue on, I want to give a shout out to my man sleeping right there. How you doing, my man? <laughs> you good? All right, cool, cool. Just wash my jacket, you know, no drool on my jacket. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that's my jacket. <laughs> but. But anyway, um, Shake and I, we stay getting the alphabet boys on us. Like, we stay getting cease and desists from any and everything. Like, it's very frustrating at times what we do because sometimes, a, a perfect example, this is the most recent one that happened. Like, the first, I'll tell you the first time and the most recent one. The first time it happened, um, we leaked Swagger Like Us. Um, that, that song came out, and I was on a plane to Denver to cover Rock the Bells and interview the far side. As soon as I touched down, the reception kicked into my phone. I'm getting all these text messages from Shake talking about, yo, something's wrong with the site. We can't do anything. Turns out Atlantic Records hit us with a CND, hit WordPress, and WordPress locked us out of our site for the entire weekend, that entire weekend. Um, the most recent one, once again, was from Atlantic Records. They don't like us for some reason. I don't know why, but they, they just don't. Um, Lupe Fiasco's I'm Beaming came out. Now this was a different scenario because whereas Swagger Like Us, we got it from some of our peoples. I'm Beaming came from Atlantic Records themselves. And so we posted it, and as soon as I get home from work, Shake texts me, yo, they locked us out of our site, we can't do nothing, 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 blah, 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 blah. So, it's very difficult at times to um, avoid that, 
Like we get, we get asked those questions from fellow compatriots all the time. And we just tell them the best way you can do it is just stream it, stream it on another um, like uploading site and just use that link on their site. Because if you try to stream it or put it on your thing, you'll end up getting shut down, so. Could you uh, say that again and try to explain that a little bit? I'm sorry? Yeah, linking to a uh, um, the, the best The best way to do it is to upload your music to like a third party like um, a div share, div share or, or, or a Z share and take that link and put that embeddable link onto your site. That way, if the Alphabet Boys do come, they'll just shut down that link and not your site. Because if you upload it to your site, they'll shut down your site until you take it off and then you got to go through the whole process of getting put back on again. If I could tell one um, sentence to, to the perspective of artists here, is um, if you have a good idea, have another one. And then have another one. Um, because the, the, the climate that we're in and, and the community that we're dealing with, you, your best bet, what you're really looking for is you're looking for exposure. You're looking for people to find out about yourself. The uh, internet celebrities uh, collected. We've decided that, that all the work that we put up uh, is, is not going to be copywritten. So if an ad company likes something we did and they want to take it and they want to put sexier models in that particular video or in, the, in that scenario, they can do that. We want the credit, but we're not asking for, we're not going to, to hold our copyright to our hearts anymore because we realize how do you grow an audience um, any other way? In the digital world, I, I, don't, I don't know that there is another way. You, you've just got to be open and free because that's, that's the way people want to get content on the web. And, um, and that's kind of the process that we have to follow right now. So I would say, everyone listen, don't, um, don't, don't, don't be afraid of someone stealing your work so much. Just have more work. Have more work to give. And if people are stealing it, you know what, you're onto something. You're moving in the right direction. Um, from the artist's perspective, it's interesting for me to listen to what the sites have to go through as far as cease and desist and shutting down um, their sites. Earlier, I mentioned being blessed to witness like the rise and fall of a lot of the industry and a lot of my artist peers going through battles with websites. Not particularly theirs, because they post a lot of content that they're supposed to, that they have rights to. But I'm talking about blogs in Hungary named Hip Hop Bootleggers or whatever you want to call it, that just post anything they want illegally. My like, whole albums, I, I can go to the sites that have my entire catalog for free. And I've seen people fight that. And you'll lose, because when one, you shut one down, there's three more that's going to come up. So again, being lucky to look at that, I said, all right, now how can I make this new way of getting music help me? How can I benefit from it? Well, I'm going to do the exact same thing that they do and beat them at their own game. So I started to release free music and create my own site where people could get all of my free content. And what that did for me was centralize my fan base. So yeah, you're going to get it for free, but you're going to get it for free from me. And I still benefit from that. I still get the numbers, the statistics to go to record labels and say, look how many downloads this Diamond District album got. You need to put it out. Had I not did that, that record would have came out three months before the record was released because you're supposed to technically give it to press three months before your record comes out for them to promote it. Me personally, I don't do that anymore. Um, with the, the internet as quick as it is, for most part, press gets it just as much as, as, as quick as everyone else does. And that cut a lot of my bootlegging in half. And people download my music from me. Um, I use a site now called Bandcamp where it gets email addresses and zip codes from people to download your music for free. And I now have a database from every major city in the world with the postcodes of exactly where they live at. And they're like, oh my God, he's giving me this for free. Why is he not trying to sell it? Then I give you another fact. I sell more CDs at live shows than I do in retail stores. I sell way more live CDs than Amazon does for me, than Best Buy or whatever else. So they are buying my records, and they are coming to me to get my music. 
So essentially what I did was just play the exact same game and put my own music up so you can get it from me instead of getting it from the bootleggers. Um, what these gentlemen do is way better. You know, they give you a little insight on the artist. There's a lot of blogs that will say if it wasn't for our existence, no one would know who you were. And then when you go to those blogs, it's just the JPEG of your album, your track listing, and a download link. And then I actually was fighting with a blogger from somewhere in Eastern Europe, maybe about last month, who said that to me. And I said, if you want to help me out, okay, put it up for free. But where's my bio? Where's links to my sites? Book me for a show. <laughs> where, where are the links to find out about me if you're supposed to be promoting me? All you're promoting is your obsession with your download numbers. That's, that's what you're doing it for. That's what a lot of them are doing it for. So if you want to help me, if these bloggers are putting your stuff out there for free, encourage them to have a bio, have a link to your site, have a link to somewhere else where someone can purchase content from you. I had a, during a, a conference, or not a conference, a panel, you were talking about sampling and uh, your theory on sampling being that you were so under the radar, um, you know, it would cost them more money to come at you than it, than it, um, right, than it, than it would be worth. I mean, if we, keep, if we keep talking about that, then I'm going to be on the radar. But um, <laughs> um, for the most part, what Jeff was talking about, um, it's, it's a figurative number of about 30,000 units. If you're selling under 30,000 units, as the saying goes with me and my friends, their lawyer fees will be more than their royalties. You know what I'm saying? It's not in their best interest to come after you. For the most part, you'll just get a cease and desist, but it'll stop you from putting a record out. But you won't be sued, you're not going to lose your house, you're not going to lose your car, nothing like that. Um, I've only, I can't actually say that, I can't incriminate myself. But uh, I haven't cleared a lot of, a lot of samples though. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you talked about Bandcamp, um, and I first learned about Bandcamp uh, through the Future Music uh, Coalition's conference, um, and, uh, <clears throat> as well as a few other uh, different web uh, applications and services I use. Um, I wanted to give this, you guys a chance to talk about some of the apps or web services, uh, clients that you guys use uh, to run your blogs um, and do what you do. Well, for me, um, like rappers I know, like I keep uh, saying, it, it's very much a community thing. Like the, uh, I went to college in Houston where I met, you know, most of the, you know, the MCs and the bands and, and the musicians that I started promoting first. So, like, first and foremost, we're kind of like, you know, a content generating place rather than just like reporting so you know you got cats you know making their own music or posting it up for you to download you know when nobody's paying attention you know it's like you said you centralize you know your fan base and you get it out for free so they keep coming back but then you get to the point where technology doesn't exactly you know uh stay you know in pace with you know you give the nature and your bandwidth charges start hitting you know so like right now you know I was, when i first started rappers on there i was like i want everything on the server so, you know, if I upload it somewhere else and the link expires or something, they won't ever be able to find that music. You know, I want them to always have a place they can come back and download it. That gets a little pricey. I remember the first time I got a, a hosting bill over $500. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't get no kicks this weekend. I got to pay this bill to keep my site up. Um, you know, so Bandcamp and, and sites like that where they allow you to, to host your music over there and, you know, for, for all the audio files out there, like really you know, high high quality, you know, all the frequencies, nothing, nothing, you know, reducing and deteriorating the sound. Um, you know, they give you the option to either sell it, you know, through PayPal, which takes nominal fees out, or give it away for free, but it's in, in exchange, you get all the contact information, the zip codes, you know where your fan bases are strongest at. You know, so you can approach promoters in those areas to get shows like, yo, I got 500 people in Baltimore buying my stuff, and there's 20 people in DC, you know, if I go to DC, I'm definitely going to try to stop in Baltimore first, you know, and make sure people come and check me out. So you can sell your physical product, your t-shirts, you know, take pictures of people, and they show people on Facebook the picture they took with you and how friendly you were in person, and they want to come out and see you at a show. Um, it was really important for artists to keep in mind when you're not necessarily making money on your music because nobody wants to pay for music anymore. We've deteriorated the worth of it so much that you want to, you know, have that database that you can always go back to. Being able to reach out to a fan base that, um, that, uh, um, you know, becoming more and more familiar with your music and, with, and who you are as a person. The people invest in you as an individual before they invest in you as an artist, you know. I mean, there's, there's a lot of talented rappers out there, there's a lot of talented poets, 
you know, painters, illustrators, but if nobody can connect with that person's individual story, you're just another person doing it. I can't tell you how many of my favorite MCs that I think can destroy anybody that's ever touched the mic will never leave, you know, Third Ward, Houston, Texas because they don't, you know, do other things. They don't wear other hats. All they do is rap over other people's beats. You know, but you gotta be able to reach out, you gotta be smart about, you know, maintaining your fan base and 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 being able to reach back out to them with, with more product. You spoke a little bit to uh, um, quality um, files and the deterioration of sound. I'll give Odyssey a chance and uh, some of the other people who are on the receiving ends of music files about uh, what quality you guys want, like the music, what format you want to, what if you get something, or uh, like we have an argument about um, bit rates, um, and whether it's 244 is the best bit rate uh, to use, or 320. I'll give you guys someone a chance to explain. Um, again, uh, I, I use Bandcamp, Bandcamp.com for all artists who don't have a Bandcamp page, get one. Um, it allows you to, you have to upload high quality WAV files to Bandcamp, and then that's the highest quality a song could be at, and then after that, the person downloading the music has the choice of what format they want to download it in. MP3, FLAC, I don't even know what FLAC is, did anybody know what FLAC file is? I don't. Uh, uh, AIFF. <laughs> um, but yeah, any any format you want to download it in, it, it allows it. Because some people care, some people don't. Some people want as many songs on their iPod as possible, so they want the bit rate to be lower, smaller, so they can fit more music. Other people want the best quality, so when they enjoy listening to it in the stereo system, it sounds the best. Some people really can hear the frequency loss um, when you compress files at high frequencies. I'm one of those people. I don't let it get get me. I mean, like, I'll still enjoy music doing MP3, but I definitely hear the differences. Um, but yeah, look into the sites that give you the options to do it. Like, take it take it serious. When you when you sending them music, I I would think me personally, I send them a high quality MP3. I don't send waves out. Um, it's just too large of a file. It takes too long to upload, too long to download. If you do send it, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but would you all convert it to MP3 before you put the link up so people can download it? Yeah. So don't waste your time on that unless you're using it for band camp and giving the artist, giving the fan the option. But uh, send high quality MP3 for sure. At some point, um, you know, technology in the compression will probably get better and we won't have to worry as much about like, you know, making something really small and losing all this audio information. But you know, we're not quite there yet. It drives me crazy sometimes, you know, you spend all this time like behind a mixing desk and you make it sound just right and pristine and then you just know that it's gonna be listened to on like, you know, shitty com computer speakers on an MP3, but you know, you have to get over it. Uh, you know, the interesting thing though, and when we're talking about getting music out there and getting it on sites, and it ties back to, uh, you know, uh, posting MP3s and whether or not you're breaking the law by doing that, Increasingly, there's more and more sites like Lala, Bandcamp, whatever, that's going to let you just embed something. A lot of artists, uh, you know, are, they're on Bandcamp or they're on Reverb Nation, which lets you take a widget away. Uh, so, you know, the portability of your stuff is really, really important. Um, you know, if you're an artist and you're looking for, if you're looking for a site to, to help you, uh, you know, house your music, make sure that it's got something that people can take with them because, you know, the viral aspect of everything on the internet means that you know you really want to take advantage of the fact that more people can take that thing and put it on their sites and stuff. Uh, so that's huge. Um, sound quality, like, you know, it depends too. There's a lot of sort of middleman services now where you pay a little bit of money. I don't know if like Odyssey you use them like TuneCore, Reverb Nation, you get your stuff in iTunes or whatever. You can be an independent artist. You can be in all of the download stores. They're gonna you know, convert to whatever format that is native to them. You still upload in a WAV file or whatever, but it just gives people more of an opportunity to, um, you know, if they like one store, if they like eMusic and they, they have a tendency to use that one the most, at least you'll know your stuff will be at eMusic and they can find it. So, but then at the end of the day, it's really dependent on the artist to tell people where your stuff is. Uh, Frank, uh, you made a, a comment about uh, you know, speaking to uh, using your server um, and disappearing links. Um, there was a, uh, Ella, Elliot Wilson used to describe what he was doing at Double XL was documenting the culture. Um, I observed a conversation on Twitter uh, this past week. Um, someone was talking about uh, the fact that bloggers have lost, lost the idea of documenting the culture. Um, uh, could you guys speak to what you feel about that? 
take that one? Can I take that one? All right, first of all, this is what happened. Come here, you can fight This is Dart Adams of Poisonous Paragraphs, by the way. First of all, this is what happened. Magazines such as thesource.com, well, the source. First thing they did was they said, all right, we're a magazine. We're beholden to shareholders. We're beholden to certain people. Namely, Dave Mays, namely, you know, the man known as Benzino, okay? So what they started doing was they started doing their own thing, their own interests over what the audience is interested in seeing. And what happened was, when they started doing these things, the audience isn't stupid. They noticed that, hey, why are we seeing made men ads all over this magazine? They said, wait, hold on a second. Why are we seeing these whack dudes all over the magazine getting uh, five mics in the source, uh, like what they did with Little Kim, because they had a beef with um, 50 Cent. <laughs> and they started deteriorating the quality of their own material. So what happened was, the blogs came along starting around 05, and people said, I'm sick of what I'm hearing on the radio. I'm sick of all the, corp all the, all the corruption that's happening in magazines. I'm going to take this into my own hands. I'm going to put up what I would like to hear on the radio. I'm going to put up what I would like to read in magazines. Because damn it, we're the audience. You're making this magazine, you're trying to appeal to us. You should reflect what we want to hear. We should see what we want to see. And when the blogs took, a, took it, they said, oh, 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 you know those old albums they got put out of print? Let's put those up. Let's introduce the younger people to that music we grew up on from 94 to 96. Nah, from 97. You know them other albums? Them, maybe they're classic albums. Maybe they're your personal classic albums. Let's start sharing that with people. So then this big community came together and they said, all right, yo, check this album out. Yo, did y'all hear this album from Brooklyn? These dudes called The Candy Store? Maybe y'all didn't hear that. I got it back. Yo, you remember that remix the dude did for Capital Tax? Yo, I got that. Bah, they put that up. Then all of a sudden people started putting up uh, 12 inches and everything. And then that community started building. And that started building. And then we had our nah rights. You know? Then we had our, uh, our vinyl athletes. We had, just like we had it back in the days when hip hop <coughs> was, you got your kid in play, you got your NWA, you know? And these guys used to all tour together because it was hip hop. It wasn't segmented until about 1997 or after 96 when we got the, um, it was the, uh, yeah. What happened was it was the um, Telecommunications Act, Post Telecommunications Act. When all the consolidation started happening, that's when everything soured on the radio and then that's what ultimately led to what happened with the blogs in 2004, 2005, 2006. But what happened was the corporations weren't too far behind. They said, wait a second, we already rule radio, we already rule the airwaves, so now let's get at the blogs. Only thing is that you can't handle the speed with which the technology and the, and the social networkings, you know, you can't handle the speed because what's going to end up happening is they're going to try and try and try and try and they're always going to be a step ahead. 